Okay, good morning, folks. Uh, well, it's morning here, um, Sunday morning. Always the right time to be working on your D1, right? Uh, anyway, after yesterday's video where I went over maintenance um, and um, and a few other things, um, I, I went to work on my D1. I had some acrylic I needed to cut and um, noticed a little problem. And what the problem was is that when I was, uh, I had my job set up um, on the plate and um, as always I was framing it. And I noticed something weird where every single time I would frame, I usually frame a couple times. It's a good practice to get into to make sure that you're, you're being consistent. Um, every time it reset on the X axis, um, it would be, uh, two or three millimeters closer to the center. So it wasn't the, um, X carriage wasn't going all the way, um, uh, to the end of its travel. Um, and so there was something weird. Um, uh, my first step in, in troubleshooting was uh, to load the same, essentially the same file um, that I had in Lightburn into LaserBox or whatever comes with uh, uh, the X-Tool. Um, and it was doing the same thing. Okay, so uh, in doing that, I, I made sure that I realized that it was a hardware problem and it wasn't a software problem um, because if you don't take that step, sometimes you're chasing your tail. Okay, so I eliminated software as a potential problem. And I realized when I was going over how to uh, adjust the tension on the x-axis um, and the y-axis um, that I was kind of fiddling around with it and um, I probably made my belt a little bit too tight, okay? And uh, that was really what was causing the problems. Um, so, you know, there is a limit to how tight you should make your, um, your, your X and Y belts. Uh, you don't want to have them so tight that they, uh, you can, you can um, pluck them and get a pretty high note. You want it to be kind of more a low bass note. Um, again, I'm not a musician, um, but you don't want it so tight that what it's actually doing is it's inhibiting the travel of um, your carriage, okay? Because obviously that's going to cause problems. Um, so to rectify that, the first thing I did was, um, you know, loosened up this screw. Then I came over here to that screw on the side that I showed you guys yesterday. Loosened it up a little bit until I was pretty happy. Okay. Now, while I was playing around with this this morning, I was reminded of a couple of other things. One, um, when I first got this, um, the X carriage was really pretty loose. And there was a lot of play, like to the point where when I wiggled it with my fingers, um, I could actually hear it knock a little bit. Uh, the solution to that is actually fairly simple. Um, you know, again, it's going to, going to require you pull out your, uh, your set of wrenches. Uh, that's not the right size. Um, it's going to require you to pull out your set of wrenches, but basically all I did was, um, I loosened up the, uh, screws that the wheels are mounted on. Okay. Remember lefty loosey, tighty, righty tighty. Okay, I loosened up the screws that these were mounted on a bit, okay, um, and I actually did all three, and basically I just reseated everything, okay, I think, I, I don't know what their uh, assembly line looks like, and look, this, this X-Tool unit is, is a really good unit, I'm very happy with it. Um, it's given me solid service so far, um, but I also understand that sometimes, you know, when you're in a factory situation, that things aren't always going to be perfect, okay? So I pulled, I undid the screws for those pulleys, um, and in doing so, you also need to um, there's this, make sure I get it in shot. 
um, there's basically this gripper that holds on to the belt. Okay, and if it didn't, well, uh, your, your machine wouldn't go anywhere. Uh, your your x-axis wouldn't go anywhere. So that's another thing to check another troubleshooting tip um, If your x-axis isn't moving um, you know go in uh, flip it over and I'll be able to take a picture of this in a sec In a sec of course, I did undid the wheels first, and the wheels kind of help everything stay in place. Okay, but there's there's this piece here. Okay, and what that piece does is it's got teeth on it, and you put it put the belt inside that little slot, and that's what carries your carriage left and right. Okay, so. You need to make sure that the that the, the belt is engaged with that, okay? But undoing that will also make this process a little bit easier, okay? So I loosened up all my my uh, excuse me wheels, and then kind of tighten them back down again. Um, the bottom one's especially important because uh, it's actually got this little nut. I think that was the one that really fixed the problem for me okay and then once you undo them and you pop them on correctly remember you need these two holes to mate up with the belt carrier okay you put those back on and you put the other wheel on And you should be good to go. Okay. So just a couple of things to look out for as you're working on your D1. Again, you know, it's like this isn't, you don't need to be a high level mechanic, but you also hopefully aren't afraid um, to pick up a wrench when you need to. And of course, I'm doing this on camera and I'm having a lot more difficulty getting this connected than I did before. Let me try this. Okay, so anyway, you know, it, the lesson here, uh, and it's a lesson that I needed, um, is, is that sometimes even after you do maintenance on your machine, and you, yeah, that happened. Um, when you're doing maintenance on your machine and you feel like everything's perfect, sometimes it isn't. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're going back in uh, that first time you run it after you do your maintenance. Just give it a little check out and, uh, you know, make sure everything's okay. All right. Okay, so there we go. Um, you know, just a little lesson learned. Like I said, I, I don't consider myself to be a pro. I'm certainly experienced with this kind of stuff, but, uh, you know, uh, sometimes you create your own problems and you have to go back in and fix them. Okay. All right. Have a good morning.